let's talk about functions. And I call these the fun haha dementals because they're functions. I like this. This is so dumb. iPhone X because it's the X axis and Y equals X. Oh, okay. So let's look at this uh, thing called function notation. Um, it's just a different way of writing things. It's not necessarily meant to trip you up. Okay, so I want you to see that every time you see this f, it's not f times x. This f with the brackets like this, we actually say f of x. What that means is it's just like a y. In other words, you're, you're used to seeing equations like y equals blah, 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 blah. Well, then just put an f of x. It's the same, same. But actually, it's a little bit more descriptive. And actually, a lot of mathematicians and scientists, we actually prefer function notation because it tells you a lot more about the function. But the basic way to think about it is this. Um, see, if it, see it as just a set of rules. So for example, um, it's just, I mean, I've seen it sort of written like a box, for example. This could be like f of x. And what do you do is you throw in something into it. So you could throw in um, any x value you like. You throw it into here, and it sort of like poops out some answer. You know, it could be whatever. So this is just a set of rules. It just tells you basically that this, what's in the bracket here, this in the, so this f of x, what it means is you need to feed it an x value. It's only defined if you give it x. And f of x can be anything. It could be any set of rules. That, that's what an equation is. For example, here we have f of x equals 2x plus 1. That just means everywhere you see an x, you know, put in whatever you like. So for this case, if you want f of one, it just means replace x with one. Over here, if we have some weird looking thing like g of x, because sometimes it can be g of x, it could be h of x, it could be c of y. The letters don't matter so much. What's inside matters. So in other words, if it's g of x, it just tells you you need to know the x value. For example, here, if we say g of 30, we just put in a 30 everywhere we see an x. We just get an answer. So let's actually see if we can solve this one then. See if this will work. So um, I'll do it maybe in purple. So we have f of x equals 2x plus 1. That's our rule. And in fact, if you recognize this, this is a linear graph. This looks something like this. See the iPhone y equals x. It's kind of clever. So what's f of 1? Well, remember what that means is we just say f of 1 is just going to be everywhere we saw an x, we just put in a 1. Now, of course, we can do this by hand. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Therefore, f of 1 is 3. So that just tells you the function is defined all over the place. And if we want at x equals 1, we know the answer is 3. If this was a graph, this would tell you the y value would be 3 when the x value is 1. Let's do a similar example here. Uh, it's just weirder looking math, but it's just the same idea. If we want g of 30 degrees, or g of just 30, let's just say, what would that be? Well, anywhere in this recipe, even if we have lots of x's, we replace every one of those x's with 30. So 4 times 30 plus, in brackets, sine of 30 times 30 squared. Let's see what we get there. Here, I think we need a calculator, because uh, at least we're not supposed to know the exact values of sines of 30 in math studies. So let's actually try to do this here. So I'll open up a calculator. Um, I'm probably going to run out of space here, but that's okay. So I'll do 4 times 30 uh, plus, I'll put maybe in a big bracket, just to be sure here, I'll say another bracket here, I'll say sine of x. It may seem like I have a lot of brackets, and I probably do. Sine of 30. I close that bracket. And now I'm at sine of 30. And I get out of that one, I do times, uh, what is it, 30 squared. 30 squared. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to say this whole thing right here, which was just a 4 times 30 hoop. I really want to be careful. I guess I could also put brackets around this one right here. See, this way I have then 4 times 30. It's just because I want to be really careful with how my calculator actually deals with this and does it in the right order. So 4 times 30 plus, and then big brackets, I want the whole thing here sort of Actually, I didn't really write it very well, did I? Ah, oh, yeah, kind of. Basically, I wanted a big bracket around the whole thing. Say sine of 30 times 30 squared. This should give you an answer, and I'm in degree mode, so everything should be fine. The answer is 570. So that right there would be the answer, 570, whatever that is. So to see the idea behind it, at least, then, isn't so complicated. You just follow a set of rules, and away you go. Let's see if we can do some more. So we've got something else called domain. Oh, by the way, I love this. The asymptotic high fives is one of my favorite math jokes. 
<laughs> the fun never ends. That's because if it's an asymptote, you never meet, right? So we have this thing called the domain and this thing called the range. These are really important for graphs, okay? Um, so the domain is defined as the set of all possible x values. This is important. Okay, this is like a, a really important definition, just like the ranges. The range is the set of all possible y values for a graph. So what this means is that if we're going to define some graph here, like f of x equals square root of x minus 2, it helps to look at it in order to be able to tell what to do here. By the way, this notation looks really weird. This just means x, uh, maybe I'll just define it here, just means x is an element of real numbers. What does that really mean? This is just what you write down when there's no problems with x. What I mean by that is that there's no places where it's not defined. For example, if there was an asymptote, there would be a problem with x. I couldn't say x equals whatever that asymptote was. See if there was an asymptote right here, which it looks like there is also here too. I probably can't say that x equals 0, so I would say uh, x can't be 0. So this is just the idea behind this. So let's just see now if we can do this one. I think it helps though to graph it in order to see what happens. Because otherwise it's, it's a little bit hard to see it. So let's open up our trusted calculator. Uh, let's ask it for a new graph. And I'll put in this equation here. So square root of, what was it? X minus two. So X minus two, graph, boom. So do you notice what happens here? It starts off at X equals two. And it sort of goes out and up. So I'm going to attempt to draw that. So let's see if I can do it on my little uh, graph here. So it kind of goes like this. And it kind of starts off and goes over here. This is x equals 1. This is x equals 2. This is x, this is y. So do you notice for the domain, it tells me where is all the x values. And this is a thing that causes some people some problems. Okay, so I really want you to think about this. I'm going to imagine I have like a little scanner here. I'm going to grab my little scanner here, and I'm going to scan from left to right and look at, can I find my function here? So watch, as I'm way over here to x equals negative a lot, because I'm way over here, can I find my function? In other words, is it defined somewhere here? No. I can't find it. I can't find it. I can't find it. I can't find it. I can't find it until here. Here is where I start finding it. Does that make any sense? Because watch, right over, for example, right here, look, I can find my function. It crosses my line here, right? I mean, it could be infinitely high, but you notice I can find it as way over here. Guess what? My function probably just goes up really high up there. So this is the idea. I think of it as like taking a line and really scanning left to right and seeing, can I find my function somewhere over here? Do you notice it's not defined? I can go up to positive and negative infinity. I'll never find it. That's actually because you can't take the square root of a negative number. That's actually why. So as I scan from left to right, do you notice on my graph, I can only find it at x equals 2 and larger? So if you say that in words, I can only find it at x equals 2 and larger, I can define, whoops, that. I'll define it like this. I'm going to say x. And didn't I just say it has to be greater than or equal to 2? So fine. i say it like this. That's all you have to do. You can write it like this. This is the domain. Domain just says x has to be bigger than 2. Um, Let's look at the range. The range is similarly. It's the set of all possible y values, which means there I scan bottom to top. So what do I mean by that? Let's look at this particular graph here. It helps to see the graph. So let's actually go and get the graph here. I'm going to press uh, tab, I think it is. I'll go up and I'll just change my graph here. I don't want to confuse things too much. Ooh. I'm just going to say, um, I'll put a nice fraction here. 1 over x. Enter. Whoa, it looks a little bit crazy, doesn't it? So I'm going to go back to my graph over here and I'm going to try to draw that. I'm going to draw my crazy looking graph. Turns out it goes like this. And like that. Do you notice then it has what we call an asymptote? And it turns out it has two of them. It has one here and one here. Let's actually, just for the fun, let's do the domain as well. Maybe we can do that. So if we wanted the domain, what would that be? And we'll actually do the range. We'll do both. Because we can. So let's look at this then. If we looked at this and tried to do domain and range, hmm, we could actually take a look at this. And uh, the domain would be anything left to right. Where can I find my function? 
So again, I'm going to sort of get my little graph here. I'm going to get that little scanner here. As I go left to right, what happens? As I go left, way over here, I can find my function, no problem. See, it's way over here. As I scan over here, can I find it? Sure, it's there. Except there's only a problem right here. At x equals 0, I can't find it. After that, I can find it everywhere else. Whoops. Maybe I'll go like this. I'll undo. So I can find it everywhere except for at x equals 0. So I'm actually going to, oops, I'm just trying to grab this thing there. Oh, man. I better move it back. There we go. As I'm trying to grab this little, uh, come on. What? I just won't let me grab it. Oh, well, who cares? As I'm scanning left to right, there's no problem with the x's except for at x equals 0. So here, I don't have to say x equals element of real. I'm just going to say x. I'm going to say it can't be 0. So you know what I do? I write it like that. Now, range is a similar way. What I do with range is I scan bottom to top. So I'm going to make myself a big fake line here. And as I scan this one here from bottom to top, look, as I'm way down here, can I find my function? Sure, it's right there. So it's defined. As I go up, no problem. Can you see it's right there? As I go up and up and up, uh-oh, I don't find it right here. So I can't be at y equals 0. But then, did you notice, though, then up here, it's here. It's defined up here. Now over here, it's there. As I go way up to infinity, I'll find it. It's just really high up. So do you see how there I can also say that y cannot be 0? So this is how I'm going to define this one. This takes a little bit of practice. So in another video, we're going to do another example.